Speaking of climate change, we all know that the right wing and conservative media outlets are doing everything they can to either just flat out ignore climate change or to try to make their readers, viewers, whatever, just believe they shouldn't really care about it. It's not a big deal. But one right wing media outlet says to themselves, you know, maybe we can't ignore this. Maybe we can't try to convince people to ignore it. So let's cover it. Sounds shocking, right? I mean, wow. doesn't seem like something that would be so uncalled for, especially when, you know, climate change is probably the most prevalent issue of our time. Uh, but this media outlet, the Daily Caller, who you might know as the media outlet, the it's the it's the right wing website that's that's uh, run by Tucker Carlson, and here on this show we know it most for it employing our dear friend Patrick Howley. Ten reasons why climate change is good for the babe. Yeah, by Patrick mean, that's, Howley. That's Whoa. Really why. Number one, girls will be wearing bikinis. Yeah, exactly. Number, Number two, one. Two extra months of bikini season. Yeah. Number two, uh, the same as number one. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. You should give yourself a show far for that one. Let's give you a I show think, far that's, for I that think one. that is like your funniest. Thank funniest. You. No, but. But. If they're not going to use climate change to prove why it's okay to ogle women, they're going to use climate change to to try to spin it to, to generate news they want to hear. And that is, climate change is good. Uh -huh. A study recently came out, and the Daily Caller covered it with the following title. Global warming is increasing biodiversity around the world. Well, that sounds great. A new study, Michael Bastash, of Daily Caller writes, published in the journal Science, has astounded biologists. Global warming is not harming biodiversity, but instead is increasing the range and diversity of species in various ecosystems. Huh. Environmentalists, ooh, have long warned that global warming could lead to mass extinctions as fragile ecosystems around the world are made unlivable as temperatures increase. But... A team of biologists from the United States, UK, and Japan have found that global warming has not led to a decrease in biodiversity. Instead, biodiversity has increased in many areas on land and in the ocean. Doesn't that sound swell? Dude, more places for, like, chicks to yeah. swim. And, like, more... Woo! Well, Media Matters decided to contact the scientist responsible... For the study, the lead author, Dr. Maria Dornalis from the Center of Biological Diversity, responded uh, in a statement to Media Matters. And this is what she says. No, our study shows nothing of the kind. It is a complete distortion of what we say, and I had no idea this story was running. She continues, what we do show is that despite indisputable loss of biodiversity at the scale of the, pl of the planet, in most places we detect a change in species that live there rather than loss of species everywhere. We suggest that part of this is caused by species migrating towards the poles in response to climate change and part to invasive species replacing local species. There is nothing in our papers to even suggest that climate change is beneficial for biodiversity. She even gave an example of how this could play out. Imagine three islands, three islands. One has blue birds, one has green birds, and one has yellow birds. Blue bird island gets warmer, and these imaginary blue birds are sensitive to the climate variation, so they go extinct. But their island is now suitable for the green birds. So the green birds colonize it. So now the green birds have two islands, their green bird island and the blue bird island. But then 
when Greenbird Island stays the same, Greenbirds would also be introduced to Yellowbird Island. And Yellowbirds could not fight the competition and go extinct. At the end, we have the same number of species on each island. There are birds on all three islands like there were birds on all three islands before. But the species that live there are different. And in total, we have lost two-thirds of the species. just want to say really briefly, the Daily Caller did something that is really smart, though, journalistically. It's brilliant. It's such a good idea when you report on the conclusions of a scientific study, never call up the people that conducted the study and get a quote from them or confirm what you're writing. Yeah, no. I mean, obviously, like, no, to do no. that is just so lame. Yeah. It's not, like, cutting-edge, ballsy journalism. Well, going back to what the Daily yeah. Caller's article says. It's liberal. They point out that the st- what the, the, their, their version of what the study says the study says species turnover was above expected but do not find evidence of systematic biodiversity loss. The editor's abstract adds that the result could be caused by homogenization of species, assemblages by invasive species, shifting distributions induced by climate change, and change across the planet. Wow, that seems like exactly what she said, except they're somehow pulling out a, a positive out of it. I mean... Media Matters got even more uh, statements from, from the uh, people involved in this study. A, uh, a corresponding perspective paper uh, on the biodiversity study in science, uh, Dr. John Pandolfi, he, he authored the, the perspective paper, said that the, it's, a, it's a gross distortion and directly contradicts the main message of the paper. Uh, In an email to Media Matters, the National Wildlife Federation, Bruce Stein, explained how an increased rate of foreign species invasion could destroy the integrity of ecosystems. And I want to end on his quote because he, I don't know if he realized what he was saying. I I think he does. But but it really does point out the, the, the crossover in the worlds. So as to why Republicans use this, he says... Saying that global warming is increasing biodiversity ignores basic ecology, uh, ecology, ecology sorry, by confusing uh, ecological de- desirable native species with the invasion of non-natives that are enriching the diversity of our ecosystems, even as they destroy their integrity. That's like saying that our economy would be in better shape if only we had a bigger labor force, even if most of those jobs were at or below the minimum wage. They're like, we would say that. Yes, we would say that. Exactly. (laughs) This guy has a great point. This guy's totally on. He's on point. You know what would be awesome is if there was a bunch of species extinction and then like people working at 30 cents an hour to do dig coal out of the last remaining mines on Earth. What I really do want, though, really badly, please, 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 please. Someone, if if you're out there listening to this and you're, and you could, and you know Patrick Halley, maybe, (laughs) get him to write that article. Get him to write that Ten article. Ten reasons why climate change is good for the babes. And then he'll... Hard on the crops, easy on the eyes. <laughs> and, then, and then a month later, he'll come out with the main reason why climate change is no good. And everyone will be like, oh shit, he finally realizes that climate change is no good. The main reason why climate change is no good is because I have a girlfriend now, and she's wearing a bikini, and everybody else is looking at her. You remember that article, right, where he complained about CPAC because everyone was hitting on his girlfriend? Uh, I, I don't, but I'll go to CPAC and hit on Patrick Kelly's <laughs> girlfriend in front of him, too. I'll, uh, I'll be there. 